Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm swatching uh, one of my favorite colors of all which is uh, Green Earth. Uh, I realized, I really didn't realize before how large my collection of uh, Green Earth uh, is but um, I have also realized that I have two groups. One is made with the Genuine Pigment uh, PG23 and the second group is made uh, with um, multi pigments or different pigments and they are huge actual imitations. Let's start swatching. I can't wait. I'm almost embarrassed by my large collection, but it is so beautiful, this uh, color. You'll see. Obviously, we start as usual with uh, Windsor and Newton and with the single pigment PG23. Um, Windsor and Newton actually offers uh, two different greeners. We'll see them. This is Terbert Yellow Shade. From what I know, PG23 is a great pigment, very light, fast. But um, it's considered a weak pigment, so that's why many manufacturers offer a hue, a replacement, or a time to strengthen it with different pigments. You see, the tinting power is very, very low, but it is so beautiful. I use it for portraits, for pottery. I like it for pottery, for atmospheric landscapes. It's beautiful. And this Windsor & Newton yellow shade is wonderful for me. It's really beautiful. Then I have Daniel Smith. This is my usual order. I start with Windsor & Newton, which is benchmark for me. And then I continue with my, with the brands that I feel more comfortable with. And then I switch to brands that I less familiar with, that I use less, that are less available here in Italy. So, this is rare green earth. Actually, I don't think it's PG23. It's the mineral pigment called rare green earth. And uh, the tube itself uh, is called uh, rare green earth. And uh, to me, it looks like uh, almost uh, cobalt green. It's much, much darker. There's a lot of pigment. It's very, very staining it's very very powerful it's really powerful but um, it's completely different to me it looks almost like a cobalt green this is a wonderful green first time i swatch it and it's very beautiful but different it's not PG23, definitely. Then I have my go-to green earth. As you see, it's well squeezed, which is my beloved Rembrandt brand. It's the brand that I always say it, that I feel more familiar with. I have a lot of Rembrandt colors. I love this brand because they're very humble, I think. They're not very marketing oriented but they, uh, they make good quality paint. And uh, it's less muted than uh, Windsor & Newton. I would have never realized the difference if I didn't swatch them side by side. So same pigment, you see, very, very different. This is more brownish, more muted, but let's wait until they dry. And this is, uh, this is Rembrandt, more greenish. I love this color is it is the one that i have in my studio palette then i have this uh, Terwert green earth by a gallo i remember that i have swatched it in the past and uh, it's also kind of weak this one but not very different from the other ones it's very delicate very weak very similar to rembrandt i think now for the moment being 
kind of hard to re-wet, but that's the nature of mineral pigment, you know. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Then I have Core Terre Verte. It's PG-23. And once again, it's very similar to this one. Although I have put a lot of pigment because um, it was a bit over filled the tube, um, I think that the color is very, very similar to the previous ones. It's not always the case. In many cases, you get the same pigment with completely different uh, interpretation. But in this case, I found them very, very close to each other, which means that you can buy the brand that is more available to you or cheaper. This is Old Holland. Old Holland usually sits down very well in pants. I have squeezed these from pants, but look at Green Earth, kind of hard. It hardened like a rock. <laughs> the other ones are all very easy to rewet and they have taken the shape of the pan very, very easily. But this is like a small rock. And I can hardly see the paint. Maybe we can wait a moment. I'll put some water in it and we wait a couple of minutes and we come back. So I go on to Paul Rubens. I recently swatched these two different PG-23 offered by Paul Rubens. This is the first version, Amber Green Earth. It's also weak and delicate, it's more muted, it's brownish, it's closer to Windsor and Newton, even more brownish. Actually, the name is Amber Green Earth. And then I have this uh, Western Kenyan Green Earth, a very precise uh, location as a source, not Africa, not Kenya, but Western Kenya, interesting completely different but they say it's pg-23 single pigment but look how different this is it's completely different it's much colder it's kind of uh, slightly more powerful i prefer the muted interpretations now we have finished with the single pigment pg23 except for old holland but we will come back we let a couple of minutes to reactivate with some water and we continue with the windsor and newton they are most popular terre verte they call it terre verte Oop. and this is a combination of three pigments pg23 terre verte pg18 viridian and pb28 cobalt blue should be granulating this one, strongly granulating because there are two granulating pigments. It's much darker, it's much colder, still delicate, but it's a different, completely different interpretation, but it's very nice, actually. It's different. I mean, in a palette, you could have both, the yellow version and this uh, multi-pigment version. Daniel Smith, also Daniel Smith as well. They have two different interpretations. And this is Viridian and, uh, and this is Viridian and uh, PBS7 natural iron oxide. It's a cold, uh, I mean, uh, I would never call this a terverta. Is not what I would expect from a Tervert. Completely different concept. It's good to swatch them because maybe you want a Greeners, a Tervert, and you buy this uh, thinking that you get uh, a muted, delicate, um, earthy green like this, and you get this uh, strong, cold, deep green. It's nice, but it's completely different. Schminke. 
They have two pigments, phthalo green, PG7 and the PBR7. And it's much more an imitation of the original color. It's really a hue because it's a very delicate um, earthy green. It's very nice imitation, I would say. But at this point, I would go with my original pigment, which is also light fast, by the way. So I would have no doubt. It's a lovely, lovely, it's a lovely hue. But it's a hue. I like to have the original single pigment colors if I can. Then I have core once again, and they have um, phthalo green plus a black PBK7, and it's called Bohemian Green Earth. Looks muted, actually. Of course, with the black, it must be muted. See that black, which is uh, hated by purists. I think it has a role in watercolor because it's great for muting down certain colors, like greens, for instance. And this is a beautiful moss green. Beautiful moss green. Once again, completely different from the others. The hues are really interpretations. It's a beautiful moss green. It's earthy. It's a green, but it's not what I would call a green earth. Now we go to Sennelier, which is always nice to swatch. Sennelier also has two different uh, interpretations. They have this uh, Tavert Brûlé, green chamber, with the uh, PB60 in the thread blue, black and a diary oh, light yellow, which is a orangey yellow, very warm yellow. And it is a very interesting cold green, not very earthy actually, but granulating, I would say. For the moment it looks like it granulates and like all Sennelier it's a joy it's a joy the dispersion on paper I mean this is these Sennelier are the most beautiful colors to use always I must uh, set up a Sennelier palette because these colors are really a joy to use maybe it's time to swatch our old Holland And uh, it's almost invisible. I wouldn't say this is the greatest color from Old Holland. Maybe fresh from the tube, but dried in a pen. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I should have used it uh, from the tube actually for a fair comparison. But I have the Rembrandt dried in a pen and I can tell you it does not behave like this possible to do at it this one it's lovely though very very delicate then I go to the second Sennelier which is called uh, green earth Tervert naturel natural green earth and it is uh, this is weird this is a single pigment and it is um, PBR7, natural iron oxide, but it must be processed in a way that uh, it looks green. And uh, I think it's very similar to PG23. Very, very weird. But it says PBR7, no doubt. Look at this. Can you read? PBR7. Dale Roni, the artist grade series, of course. And this is Viridian, once again. Yellow ochre and the mouse black, PBK11, which is a strongly granulating black. Let's see what it gives. 
Once again, it's a deep, dark interpretation. Should be granulating. It's a beautiful color, but uh, it's very warm, actually. I don't know, it's not earthy at all. I don't know why they call it Terre Verte, but uh, it's a Terre Verte hue. Then I have this palette that the follower sent me, Vati, and uh, there is a Terre Verte, and this is a whole bind palette, and it is this one. Much easier to rewet in a pan than Old Holland. It does rewet very, very well. And this is, whole, oh, this is so lovely. Once again, different because it is PG-23, so this the original pigment, but uh, with the addition of PG-17 chromium oxide green, a dull, dull green that I used to mute down other greens. And uh, this is Holbein Terbert. Very nice, actually. Once again, different, but it's very nice. Renaissance, you know, the Polish brand, artist grade, very nice prices, budget friendly, like most uh, Eastern Europe brands, they're very high quality for a very budget friendly price, which is always a good combination. And uh, it's a moss green once again, it's a PG-17 chromium oxide green with the PBR6, calcinated synthetic iron oxide, a sort of um, synthetic pigment of uh, earth brown, and PO62, orange. It's very mossy, it's very earthy. Different once again, strong tinting power, very powerful color. This is very earthy, it's like a much stronger version of uh, PG-23. And last, I have a PG-26. Yeah, I have this um, palette, Lucas. I quite like Lucas, I must say. It's not a very appreciated brand. Uh, I think it's completely underrated because it's absolutely artist great for me. And also budget friendly, especially the tubes. And this is uh, Verona Green Earth. From what I understand, the denomination Verona should refer to a source of uh, the pigment, the green earth, uh, that should be sourced near Verona, the Italian city, which here is not the case because it's a cobalt green. PG-26, cobalt green. And it's beautiful, it has a color separation. Look at this, PG-26, should be granulating. This is beautiful. It's once again, not a color that I would call a green earth, but very, very beautiful. We let these wonderful colors dry. Maybe I'll just sketch a teapot in the meantime, and I'll be back. So I have a quickly sketch with my pencil, a teapot. You know, the famous Brown Betty teapot from England. They come from Stockholm Trent, actually, from what I know. I um, want to put my hands on one because apparently they make a wonderful tea and they're so beautiful, so iconic, but we will paint it not brown, but in green today. I think I will use my studio palette with my Terre Verte that uh, I have uh, here, which is the Rembrandt version, because I'm more familiar with it. Let me reactivate it. And now I speed everything up and I will see you when it's finished.
Okay, now these colors are dry. There's a certain sheen here in Renaissance, which, which happens quite often with the Renaissance because they have a honey. So let's come to conclusions. From here to here, they are PG-23. I can say that these four, Rembrandt, Egallo, Cor, and Old Holland, Old Holland somehow weaker, but the other four, uh, more or less identical. They're all very, very nice. Maybe core, slightly more intense, but it might be human error. So they're very, very similar. I would say that the pigment is very consistent across brands. Windsor & Newton is very beautiful, but slightly more yellowish. So in a palette, maybe I would keep this version, one of these four. The Diane Smith is absolutely beautiful. Look at the clusters of paint, the heavy granulation. Can you see the granulation? It's absolutely beautiful, but um, doesn't serve the purpose of a green earth. So if you like it, buy it, put it in your studio palette, use it, but don't think that it is a green earth as you might think. These two, they're very nice especially this amber green earth, I think, which is soft and muted as Terwert green earth should be. Then we have this version from Winsor & Newton, Terwert, which is beautiful. I think this is beautiful. From all the hues, the ones that I prefer are Winsor & Newton and Sennelier. Sennelier because it's almost a perfect imitation of PG-23. And this is... Uh, I don't know, this is granulating, it's slightly cloudy, the texture, really beautiful, this Winsor & Newton. The Daniel Smith Terwert, uh, don't particularly care for it, it's dark, I don't know, it's like a stronger viridian. I, mean, I don't think it is possible to call this a green earth, it's a beautiful color, but not a Green Earth, once again. Schminke, I forgot to say, Schminke is also a perfect imitation of Green Earth. Very, very nice pigment. There must be some reasons, availability of the pigment, cost, uh, why they offer this combination. I know that some manufacturers think it's easier to offer a combination, and many have double versions. Look at um, Winsor & Newton. Look at Core. Core also has two. Um, versions. This is moss green, this is uh, authentic Terverte, green earth, which I like very, very much. And this Sennelier, once again, is very, be very beautiful, but different thing. Whereas the Terverte Naturel is very nice. Daleroni, Daleroni is a beautiful color, but not a Terverte. This Lucas is dull cobalt green. It's nice, it is dull, it is somehow see, but I wouldn't compare. It's my least favorite in this page. Although I just said that I like Lucas. And uh, this Renaissance is uh, almost an amber, green chamber, actually green chamber. It's called green earth, but for me it's a green chamber. Beautiful, but green chamber. The whole body is very, very beautiful, I think. They have PG-23 inside, very, very nice. So now you know what uh, to buy. If you want to buy a uh, Terverte, you have these uh, differences. Not a lot of difference between uh, some of them, some imitations, some uh, authentic PG-23, but huge differences with the hues. And uh, my favorite stay in this area, but I also like the whole line version very, very much. And uh, Sennelier, Terverte Naturel, beautiful. Also this green chamber is very beautiful. It's not a green chamber, but it's very beautiful. Hi, today is the day after, and I have had second thoughts that I have not shown you mixes with Green Earth Terverte. I usually use this color on its own because it's so weak and delicate, but uh, it may give uh, Lovely mixes. I'm curious actually to see what happens if you mix it. I think that uh, the ratio must be in favor of Green Earth because it's such a delicate 
and weak pigment, but um, let's try some mixes. This is a gorgeous palette for autumn. What do you think? Barber Senna, Morte Verde. You see, it's such a wonderful pigment. It's um, transparent, it's granulating, it's light, fast, completely underrated. Delightful mix. Actually, I'm completely changing my mind and I'm saying that it's lovely mixes because in we mute every color down provided you put enough uh, green ass. And uh, this is pyrrole orange, cobalt violet, potter's pink, knuckle gold. and burnt sienna. So you see all these leaves in common have their verte and diluted wash of uh, more common colors or uncommon colors. But they're all beautiful actually. Oh, let me try one more weak color, which is, uh, put it here, Van Dyke Brown from My Mary. Do you use um, green earthy mixes? And if yes, if so, what color do you mix with it? For what you use it? I think this is a very lovely palette for a muted uh, autumn palette now that autumn is around the corner it's very interesting so i regret not having used tervert more in my mixes and uh, thanks a lot and uh, as usual i'm waiting for your comments have you used uh, any of this paint do you have a tervert green earth in your studio palette uh, which one do you prefer do you have different brands? Because there are many brands, of course, that are not included in here. I'm sure there is a Da Vinci, Graham, I don't know, all the beautiful foreigner brands that I don't have. And uh, I'm really looking forward to your comments. And you know that I love to chat, so don't hesitate to comment. This is a very quick sketch. Don't have much time today. Just to see what happens when you use this color is you see it's not very possible to go very dark with the green earth terre verte this is the rembrandt wet on wet wet on dry you don't really go very dark i had to add some violet shadow to to reinforce uh, shadow but uh, for pottery, I think it's one of the best colors ever. Look at how beautiful it is. It's a really great, great paint to have. I use it mainly for still lives, pottery dishes, cups, mugs. I love this color. Please do tell me how you use this uh, pigment. It's not so easy to use. I don't use it very often, but it's something that really I can't live without in my palette. Thanks a lot for having watched this video with me and stay tuned, subscribe to my channel. And if you have enjoyed this video, you can give me a thumb up. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao from Elisabetta. Mm -hmm.